What's up everyone, Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And welcome to the first video of a three-part series that will help you improve your ground strokes and take your game to the next level. I watch amateurs play on a daily basis and I've recognized three common mistakes that they make that, are hurting, that is hurting their game and that is bringing their level down. Number one, lousy use of their lower body, including footwork and weight transfer. Number two, too much focus on top spin and racket head speed. And number three, overthinking the swing, leading to poor stroke production. In this video, we're gonna focus on number one, improving the use of your lower body, your footwork, and how you can actually connect your lower body to the upper body to play tennis better. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss part two and three, which is going to be about racket head speed and overthinking your swing. First, let's go to the court where I'm going to show you the things you might be doing wrong, what you should be doing instead, and then we'll meet back here for my final thoughts and some of the drills that I like you to try that will help you uh, improve your game. All right, guys, so the first mistake I want to cover in the series is uh, court positioning and how I think a lot of amateurs tend to be almost like scared of the ball. The, their first step tends to be backwards always because they want to create more time. Tennis is difficult as a time pressure uh, sport and with the ball coming to you, you tend to back up to give yourself a little bit more time to hit and he ends up actually making your shots worse. So we're gonna, I'm going to hit a little bit and talk uh, about it and kind of show you different angles so you guys see what I'm, what I'm saying. because. The more you back up, the worse quality your shot's going to be. You kind of want to hold ground. You don't want the ball, ball to bully you. You want to actually be the one hitting the ball and bullying the ball. So let's go right to it. All right, let's hit some balls. There you go. So you see, if I'm hitting here and I'm immediately backing up, it's always more difficult. See, like if I immediately, my first step, my ball is going to be not as good if I'm immediately going back. But because the, the fact is the ball is going to catch us. The ball is faster than us. So if your first step is always back, it's always gonna be more difficult to hit quality balls, right? Your body is going to be falling back and you're gonna hit short balls like that, right? I'm, I'm running away from the ball just so I can hit it. I'm not hitting well. The, the best thing you can do Okay, the best thing you can do is actually go to the ball. So here's, here's a quick fun tip. If you guys ever watched that, that movie Hitch, there's a scene where Will Smith tells Kevin James that he has to do 90% of the approach towards the woman and she's gonna do the last 10%. Do that, pretend that you're the woman here, okay? And the ball is the man, it's going to drive, it's going to come to you 90%, right? It's going all the way there. 90% towards you, but that last 10%, your body should be moving to the ball, okay? You are always moving to the ball in that last 10% because otherwise you're falling backwards, okay? Let's, now let's do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it where I'm always trying to move in and hit the ball. Here we go. So, boom, split step. I'm gonna to move in and hit. See, the ball is coming to me. That last second, I'm the one going to hit it. That last second, I'm the one moving and hitting. Even if I have to back up a little bit more, behind the baseline, I'm moving into it. You see like the quality of my shots. I'm not trying to hit the ball harder right now. I'm not hitting the ball any harder than I was before, but my body is moving towards the ball. My body is going to be moving towards the ball, okay? I know this is basic and I'm sure you've heard it before, but if you just keep trying to back up all the time, it's very difficult to play. If you go forward, you got time, you got time. The thing is sometimes we think we don't have time but we do, we can still move forward. So try to avoid that first step just being backwards. That first step being backwards is not gonna help you in any way, okay? So let's, let's watch it again a little bit. I'm gonna do a few more examples. Where, boom, I go split step, you see, the last, boom, I'm moving to the ball. My body's moving towards the target I wanna hit. And that's key, my ball, towards the target, it's always gonna be much easier to hit the ball deep, to hit the ball cleaner, okay, without having to swing super hard, okay? That's not to say that sometimes you're not going to have to back up. You're going to, but most, most of the time you actually can hit the ball moving forward. Now, the, instead of moving backwards, think about more moving 
away from the ball. That's the most important thing. Regardless, obviously, if you're playing a point, the ball is going away from you. But think about like the most important thing. Again, the ball is going to catch you, right? The ball is going to catch you if you just move backwards. But if you move it out of the way to hit it, you got plenty of time. Okay, so think about playing dodgeball, right? If you're going to throw the ball, if you just try to escape it like that, you're not going to escape the ball. If you go like that, you escape the ball. It's the same thing here. We got to get away from the ball first. So then we can hit. If we just back up, you're still going to be jammed. You're still going to be hitting crappy balls if you just try to back up. So let's do just a couple more here. Oh, even on a deep ball. See, I held ground. See, I'm moving forward. He's hitting a deep ball. See, I'm moving forward to it. My body's moving forward. That last 10%, I am going to go hit the ball. I'm not letting the ball hit me. Here we go. Last couple. moving towards the target last 10 percent towards the target last 10 percent towards the target okay now how can you train this uh, what i want you to do this drill i did all the time while i was playing and it helps me tremendously this is what i want you to do you get some balls so you're going to play one ball behind the baseline one ball in front of the baseline okay one, no matter what both feet inside the baseline both feet behind the baseline okay I'm just gonna go that in and out drill remember that we used to do in out in now I call it the in and out drill so here we go okay so one back here I'm kind of chilling I'm holding ground but I'm still moving forward and I'm gonna go in I'm gonna take that thing early I'm gonna go back I'm gonna kind of chill I'm gonna go in four boom here we go again from back here, nice and chill, pull. Then next ball, I'm gonna move forward. Pull, back here, nice and chill. Pull, next ball, I'm gonna move forward. Pull, back here. Nice, all right. So this drill helps me a lot because it trains your eyes. You're gonna recognize those short balls a lot easier if you just do that in and out. Have someone hit a consistent ball to you in and out in and out call it the in and out drill and it's going to help you a lot with visualizing seeing that most balls we actually don't have to back up some we do but most we don't and we're just not trained to go forward more often okay now let's go back to my apartment i'm going to talk a little bit more about it and conclude this video all right so do you think you are making those mistakes um, if you do, I want you to remember these three things. First, remember that you have more time than you think you do. Second, don't run away from the ball. It will always catch you if you're backing up. So have it in your mind that you are the one who's actually going and catch it is not going to catch you. And number three, remember the hitch rule. If the ball is going to travel 90% of the distance towards you, that last 10%, you are the one that goes and hits it. You don't fall away as the ball is catching you. you go and hit it on those last 10% using your legs, weight transfer and all that. And to improve this part of your game, you have to put yourself through uncomfortable situations. You have to feel rushed a little bit until you don't feel rushed. So do that drill that I, I showed on court where you go one behind the baseline, one in front of the baseline. That helps a lot training your eyes. Uh, also do have some rallies that you only stay inside the baseline. Maybe do that for 30 minutes. You see the moment you back up a little bit, uh, how much easier it is. So you have to get used to that time pressure um, that tennis requires. And by doing this type of training, you recognize that unless your opponent is hitting great shots all the way back deep in the baseline or putting you in a very defensive position, you m most of the time have the opportunity to actually move to the ball even if it's a slight little bit, if it's just one step that your body and the ball are coming together, um, it's going to help your tennis dramatically. So you have to recognize that, know that, that again, unless you are really on defense or your opponent's hitting unbelievable shots, you can move to the ball and hit better ground strokes. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. It helps us with the algorithm. Uh, we truly appreciate that. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss part two and three. And I'll see you guys in the next one.